What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell for another episode of Form Check Friday, the show where we take your viewer submitted videos, we pop them up on this screen behind me, and I do my very best to get everybody thinking about some new cues, give critiques on lifting, and hopefully help everybody lift a little bit more weight. If you're interested in submitting your videos, go ahead and send those video submissions to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. As well, we also have a live stream where we do live form checks, Q&A, get to know Dylan and I a little bit, and you can come by for those at twitch.tv slash calgarybarbell every 12 p.m. MST on Fridays. Did I say Fridays? Anyways, we're going to dive into this. So we left off with Daryl last time. Now, to give a little bit of context again for those of us who maybe weren't here last week, Daryl is 68 kilos. His PR is 100 kilos. Here he's doing 83 for a triple. Um, he says he's been training on and off for about three years. And uh, he gave a little bit of a critique of his own lifts here. So he says he feels the lockout is relatively strong, but... He feels weak and uncomfortable in the bottom, or unstable rather. He says he's not sure how to properly kind of get that feeling like his legs are pushing. He says he, he called it glute and quad activation. Um, but, to, you know, to be frank with everybody, if you're squatting, your glutes and your quads are active. You know, uh, language matters. So I think what, what Daryl's trying to say is he's not really feeling like he's working properly, like his legs and uh, hips are contributing maybe the way that they should. It's not just quite not feeling right. Um, he said something about being afraid to lock the knees out a little bit, which honestly probably doesn't matter too, too much unless you're going to be competing, in which case you'll need to lock your knees uh, before and after lifting. All right, so let's dive on in and see what we can see. Now, the first thing that I notice right off the bat is after our boy Daryl here unracks, we see a fair bit of wobbliness and, and uncertainty and, and just a lot of movement in that upper back. Now, lifters who are watching this, when you're in this position, before you unrack the bar, I want you to be as tight and as stable and as absolutely locked the hell into that bar as possible. I want you to imagine you're already in a maximal squat. How tight do you need your back for a maximal squat? Friggin' tight. So tighten up before you unrack the bar. That's that's number one here. Now, once he's set, you'll notice that the way Daryl's initiating the squat here is we're just pushing knees forward. The knees are going forward. And then as we get to about this point, you'll notice his torso start to, to change angles. So again, if I draw this line, uh, through Daryl's torso, we'll see that that angle changes pretty significantly. The angle of his back changes pretty significantly into the bottom there. So what I would rather see uh, and what I would encourage Daryl to try to do is as he's initiating the squat, instead of trying to stay like this, get that hip back and start your lean before you initiate the squat. So push your butt back a little bit, put that weight on your heels, keep that back nice and tight, and then sit straight down. But not until you've set your torso angle. Now I'm gonna get Dylan to link or annotate a video where we talk about torso lean and how people should maybe not try to stay quite so upright when they're squatting, at least in some cases. And I think that might find, uh, you, you might find a little bit of value in that. So Daryl, if you're watching, go check that video out and definitely work on trying to hinge back into the squat a little bit better. Hopefully that helps you, my man. All right, so next up, we've got Nick doing some bench press. Now, Nick says he's been lifting for about two years with pretty steady progression in all three main lifts, but his bench has always been his most difficult. He says he's constantly finding himself having good and bad days and figures the root of the problem is his leg drive. Some days it feels strong and explosive, other days really not so much. So he says he's currently doing not doing any powerlifting meets, being that he's focused on his career in the military, but it is something that he's interested in doing in the future. This is a third set, his third set of 225 for four reps. All right, so now, Nick, I definitely agree with you. I think the leg drive is the, the crux of your problem here. And the issue is that there is no leg drive until you go to press. So we always look at the setup. Now the upper body setup here is pretty decent. But when you're unracking, there is just no tension in this whole area. Just watch this while Nick bench presses. So we unrack it and the legs are just loose. And we go to press and the legs relax even more. 
So at this point, your legs are at their most relaxed. Now you can see that the heels are up here. One of the things I'll often try to get people to do is think about driving your heels down. Even if you're not gonna put your heels down, which in a, in a competition powerlifting setting, you need your feet flat on the ground. But if you're not looking to compete or you're looking to compete in a federation other than the IPF, which is totally fine, you're going to uh, want to press through your heels despite them being in the air. And you want to try to keep relatively consistent leg drive. At this point, so from the unrack to the point where the bar touches your chest, your legs are doing nothing for you. I think in order to get more consistent, in order to get better contribution from your legs to the lift, you need to have them working more often. So here again, we relax the legs and then there's this like jolt here. And if you watch his legs, you can see his, his legs are picking up almost off the floor and then driving back really hard. So my challenge to you would be bring your feet out this way. So they're on the ground flat. Think about pushing yourself back up the bench the whole time from the unrack until the re-rack, the whole, whole set on the way down, on your chest, on the press, all the way through. Push, 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 push back. And that should help contribute to your arch, which will put pressure up on your traps, which is gonna drive your chest up into the bar. I think that if you were using your legs, honestly, by about th this point right here, you'd probably be touching your chest. So you'd be trimming your range of motion considerably, which in most cases is gonna to contribute to more weight on the bar. So let's get a little bit better leg drive, more consistent leg drive. And I think that's gonna be a real big benefit for you, man. All right, next up we have Ian and Ian's doing some deadlifts. All right, Ian, he says he's a new subscriber and really enjoying the channel. So welcome to the channel, Ian. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Uh, he says he's been deadlifting a little less than a year uh, and learning from YouTube videos mostly. So this first pull was 405. He says after that, he pulled 425 just as easy, but his phone died, so he didn't get it. And we all know that if you didn't post the lift on the gram, did it really happen? I don't know. I'll let you guys fill in the blank. He says 425 is his PR. So uh, deadlift goal is to pull 500. He feels like he has enough in the tank to pull much larger numbers. But when he starts to add a little bit more weight, he gets stuck at the knees. And he can't push his hips through. So what are some form corrections, he says, uh, that he can make to help him as well? Some maybe uh, some additional lifts that can help him improve. So and I can kind of see out of the corner of my eye what is going on already here. Now, I kind of wish we had this from a side angle because what's happening is his hips and low back are looking like this. Uh, as opposed to being a little bit more neutral. Now, in a lot of cases, people can get away with pretty round back deadlifts. And um, I, I don't think it's really a big issue for people. But when we get into these positions where we're getting really stuck at the knees, and you can see it kind of slows down a little bit, and we have a fair bit of extension. Like this is mostly back extension from about here up. You can see his torso is kind of straightened out there. So, what I would recommend is number one, if you can get your back a little bit flatter in your start position, either by pushing your knees out, um, maybe raising your hips or just kind of pushing your butt back towards the back wall behind you a little bit. Um, that's going to be a good way to sort of cue yourself to get technique to work in your favor here. And also the two big things I'm going to recommend are going to be assistance exercises. So number one, I would definitely recommend a pause deadlift about here. Um, so we're looking at maybe an inch, inch and a half off the ground. And we'll notice that if we were watching from the side, this is probably the point where we start to lose most back position, um, either as the bar lifts off the floor or just after. The reason I recommend strengthening this position is because I believe if you do this with maybe 60 to 70% weights, we can slowly over time um, reduce the amount of rounding going from something like this to something like this, um, which is going to improve our position overall. So some pause deadlifts, nice and low in the range of motion, working on trying to achieve a little bit more of a neutral position in the back. Now the other thing, and you'll notice, like I said, we go through a lot of trunk extension here. So the other thing I would do is I, this is a perfect platform for it. I would hook some bands onto these band pegs here over the bar. <coughs> <clears throat> and I would use some accommodating resistance to really punish that top position. So if you lose position, it's going to be way harder. And if you need to extend your back at the top of your lift, well, then you better be friggin strong at it, right? So adding some bands can make you a lot stronger through that lockout position. 
probably don't need much. I would say if the bands are contributing anywhere between 10 and 20% of your estimated one rep max on the deadlift, that is enough tension for a raw lifter. Um, I think that's going to do a lot for adding um, strength in the sort of necessary patterns and ranges of motion that we're talking about in order to make your deadlift better. So if you have problems like Ian, maybe try some of those suggestions out and I hope that helps. All right, so up next we have Dylan or Dylan, however you want to pronounce that. And Dylan's from Wichita, home of Mark Ripito, I believe, anyways, the Wichita Athletics, Wichita Falls Athletics Club. Maybe Wichita Falls is different from Wichita. I don't know. I'm sorry. Anyways, he says squats are feeling good, but his ankle seems to be pronating in the bottom of the squat. He's not sure if that's a flat feet issue or if it's even an issue. So this is the last set of a three by five at 295. He's doing a three by five. This must be the hometown of Mark Ripito. Anyways, I think what our boy here is talking about is the fact that his heels are coming up and you can see that his heels are actually look like they're moving inwards in the bottom of the rep. So we're definitely getting forward on these. Now there's a few different things that I would probably recommend. Now, the first thing I would recommend is potentially a heeled lifting shoe. Now you might hear that and think like, oh crap, I don't know if I want to spend 150 plus on a pair of shoes. So what I would do is I would take one of these bad boys up here, one of these little 2.5 kilo plates and pop it under there. Now that is gonna at least give you a little bit of a feel to understand whether or not you're gonna get a benefit from a heeled lifting shoe. If you can, if you can pop some, uh, obviously you don't wanna do this while you're lifting, you set them up and then walk out onto them. Um, but you have two and a half kilo plates, you put them under your heels, it gives you a little bit of a lift and you see if that helps you feel a, a little bit more stable, maybe it makes getting to depth a little bit easier and see if that helps before you invest in a pair of shoes. Um, but that is one thing that I would look at. The other thing is I would look at maybe changing your stance a little bit. Maybe being a little bit wider will allow you to get to depth a little bit easier. Maybe thinking about pushing your knees out more or less will help you get to depth a little bit easier. And the other thing I think you could do is, well, he's actually doing a pretty good job of it. I was gonna say push the torso back a little bit, but his torso angle is actually staying pretty okay. I would just try to put that weight on your heels a little bit more as you start. So not even necessarily pushing the hips back more, but just tension back onto your heels. Almost just pivoting at your ankle. If your ankle's there here, just kind of pull your ankle a few degrees back. So if you're here, just go to like, I'm um, having a hard time illustrating this, but you know what I mean. So just try to shift that weight back just a little bit at the start and see if you can maintain that feeling of kind of sitting back a little bit more into the bottom instead of allowing things to kind of uh, come around forward, which is putting you on your toes. So yeah, potentially invest in a pair of lifting shoes. Look at trying to distribute the weight a little bit more onto your heels or at least evenly throughout the foot. And that should help quite a bit. All right, this next bench press comes from Colbain. And hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, Colbain. Uh, it's an Icelandic name and I'm not familiar very much with a lot of the pronunciation of uh, Icelandic words. So um, he says he's been running our program, the Calgary Barbell free 16 week program. If anybody's interested in that, head over to calgarybarbell.com, go to the coaching shop and there's a download link for a free 16 week powerlifting peaking program. Uh, he says he's okay with his squat form and we didn't have that in the video, so the bench. All right. He thinks his bench is horrible because he's so uneven and crooked. The right side of the bar is always over the left side when he benches and he always re-racks the weight with his left arm first. It said, he says it really bothers him. All right, so a <clears throat> few things to note. Number one, oops. Number one, sometimes we need to accept that asymmetry is okay. Not everybody's body is built symmetrically. As a matter of fact, I would argue that nobody's body is built perfectly symmetrically. So we may have discrepancies in how we move. That is okay. The trick is going to be to take advantage of that or to at least learn to live with it. So um, as we usually do, we're gonna start with the unrack here. So looks like we could, looks like we have a, a pretty decent contribution of leg drive. He's unracking with the butt up, which I like. He's keeping the shoulder blades locked in pretty well. Now let's see how this goes with the unrack. Good, keeping good position. But you'll see as he gets the bar out of the rack, he's reaching forward with his shoulder. So what I want you to do, Colbain, is as you unrack, I want you to think about just your triceps. Unrack with just your elbows. Keep all this tension, think back, back, chest up. Just use your triceps to unrack. Just straighten the elbows, that's it. 
That's all you want to think about to unrack. So we're we're getting reached up. You see the chest fall a little bit. You see the shoulders pronate a little bit, which puts us a little bit out of position. That's okay. Let's get into this here. So decently nice light touch, but we are relaxing on the chest, right? We're not maintaining the leg drive. We're not maintaining the chest up. There's a little bit of relaxation. You can see the bar kind of bounce a little bit on the chest. We need to be squeezing the crap out of that bar with your hands. We need to be actively pulling the chest up into the bar, especially in that bottom position. The other thing I'm looking at here is a pretty narrow grip and pretty long arms. So I would challenge you to try at least moving your grip out a little bit wider so that we can take advantage of not having to go quite so far with this range of motion. If we can get those hand out a little bit, that might help a lot of it. Now there's also a single at the end here. Oh, that last rep, there's one more thing I'm gonna talk about, and that is bar path. So what we want is in the bench press, we wanna see the bar come back over the shoulders and then straight up. We wanna see a sort of J type curve. What we're seeing here is more of a straight up and then back pattern. And you'll notice that it's pretty tough. And then he hits that point, slows down a little bit, and then presses it back and it starts moving better. Up and then back moves better. Back moves better. All right. Um, so yeah, basically we wanna get better at pressing the bar back first thing off the chest. <clears throat> now this rep here, just a quick word about handoffs. Um, obviously having a guy to hand off is fantastic. And just a quick critique uh, of the handoff for the, for the handoff guy here. So it looks like he's picking up quite a bit of the weight and then kind of tossing it out this way. So what we want with a handoff is we want it to be pretty gentle. We want gentle handoffs. We want to essentially take as little as we need to to help the lifter get it out of the rack. And when we release it, we want to release it very slowly so that our contribution to the lift is felt as little as possible by the lifter who's bench pressing. Now, back into the lift. So first off, seeing all this stuff, all this wiggling after the bar comes out of the rack means we're not set as tight as we should be. By the time that bar comes out of the rack, much like we talked about with the squat at the beginning, we should be so heckin' tight. This whole thing should be set. We should be absolutely unmoving once we get that hand off. Again, bar path, right? Bar goes straight up instead of back. And we're just dumping it onto the chest. We're good to about Eh, here and then it's just poof we're just falling onto the chest and you can see uh how this how the chest actually changes we come down and the chest collapses and then we're trying to press it back so we need to again be more controlled in the bottom position we need to actively press the chest up we need to be tighter on the chest nice light controlled touches and we need to work on that bar path all right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave you with Christian. Now Christian's doing some deadlifts here and I want everybody to go ahead and head down into the comments section below this video and let us know what you think Christian could do to improve his deadlift. I'll be chiming in on this next week in the, the first lift of next Form Check Friday, but I'm gonna give you guys some context for Christian's deadlifts and uh, I'd like to hear some constructive criticisms of his deadlifts and maybe some offers of or, or suggestions in terms of technique, maybe assistance exercises and all that kind of stuff to help Christian deadlift a little bit better. All right. So he says he's looking to improve form on his deadlift. Longtime viewer from Denmark finally gathered enough courage to submit a clip for us and the Calgary community to criticize. So, all right. Thank you for, uh, Thank you for sending this video in. Thank you for sharing with us and allowing yourself to be an example um, of, you know, technique critique and that kind of stuff. So background info, five plus years of training experience, only two of which have been, only two of which have been somewhat serious. Um, main focus on bodybuilding, but based around the big three still. He says at the moment he has no intention of competing, but he would, however, love to improve his form and get stronger. I mean, wouldn't we all? So this lift is 440 pounds or 200 kilos for four reps, RP eight to nine. So he says he finds it very difficult to, to, to stay tight while getting into position. He says he feels engaged in his glutes, hamstrings, lats, but he finds it super challenging to brace properly while getting into position between reps. 
He thinks maybe the straps are an issue due to the preparation time, so the need to like wrap them around the bar. Uh, he says it finds it easier to brace properly with hook grip, but it is so damn painful. Yes, it certainly is. He says he also feels super awkward doing conventional with a relatively stiff belt. And the last thing he mentions here is there's maybe a slight overextension at the top. So I'm going to leave that for our viewers to take a look at, and I will be back to critique Christian in the next episode of Form Check Friday. If you're interested in submitting your own videos to be critiqued on Form Check Friday, go ahead and send that email to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. And if you want to join us for our live stream, please do so. We're going to be live streaming every Friday at 12 p.m. MST on twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. So come on by and check it out. We'll see everybody in the next episode. Make sure to hit subscribe and like the button. Like the, <laughs> like the video. All right, that's enough for me. Bye-bye, everybody.